<clears throat> hey everybody, so this is where we left off last time on the stream. We have the robot pretty much done. I might go back and make shader tweaks and do some more detail painting and stuff, but for the meantime, we're going to focus on the map because the boss can't just be in a blank space. And I've got a reference sheet together. For space station stuff that I like, just like cool space station detail, maybe some glowing tubes, and the whole thing has to be cylindrical. So maybe something like this, I don't know, we'll figure it out. To start out, we need a bay or area for the elevator that the player's on, so we'll go ahead and add that. We'll make it 32 vertices because it's going to be nice and close to the player. And then we'll scale it in a little bit. We just need enough room for it to sit the player in it. And then we'll put this just like this. Give it a little bit of a relief from the cylinder. And we can delete these faces, and you'll notice that these faces are outward, so we'll flip the normals. Oh, I need to turn some music on. Let's start with this one. All right, cool. So that's our hole. Then we'll duplicate that and we'll make a nice rim of some sort. We can always change this later. But that's a nice area for the player to sit. And I'm thinking when you start the boss battle, the boss is gonna sort of grab on and pull himself up because this is sort of a tall area. And this is also, if you look down here, this is sort of the view the player is going to have of the boss. So he's pretty big. The hand is about as big as the platform. So if we grab this, which I did get IK working on the hand, rotate it, that's about how big the fist is relative to the player. So let's actually take a look at that. When he's punching, it'll be like here. Yeah, so that's going to be nice and big. <clears throat> but I'm thinking about like this giant cylindrical area encompassing the player, like sort of like a space station or spaceship engine room. Let's go ahead and continue this venture though and make the platform nice and big. Just give him a nice area to grab onto. And we're gonna be testing with the boss because we're gonna model and animate the boss in place. All right, so maybe he'll like grab on there. He'll be down here. So these hands will like come up from below and then the boss will sort of pull himself up. We want to be careful not to obstruct too much of the boss, so we're not going to make this much bigger, but maybe just a tiny bit. Cool, and then we'll extrude that straight down. The floor will probably be around here since that's where the robot's legs are. Make the bevel nice and sharp. That's a decent start. So now let's go ahead and make the walls. We're just sort of blocking shapes in right now. We're not focusing on detail. We just want to get the player area sort of set. And I'm thinking the walls, the outside walls, um, can be higher resolution because they're much bigger. Or lower resolution, or 32 is fine actually because it's gonna look smooth from the player's perspective. So in terms of dimensions, are we in metric? We're not. So we'll go to meters. And this is 40 meters. I need to make sure that our player thing is still about like close to two, and it is. Because the recommended play area for Punch Bomb is two meters by two meters, or bigger. 
So let's just make this like 40 by 40. And that'll be plenty. Then we can drag the floor up to where it needs to be. And we'll have the player come down from a decent height. Maybe like up here. And that'll be our walls. Maybe this won't even be complete. This will just be like the catwalk, or one of the catwalks. So we'll take our player model. This is about average human size. First, we'll show all wireframes for this. And we'll take the player and make sure they can fit on the catwalk because we want to make a catwalk that's um, about the right size. And we can go ahead and move the outer walls to this layer while working on inner stuff. And I think we want to make this catwalk a little bit thicker. Something like that so the player has so it looks like it's about the size where the player would grab onto some railings. Hey, Cory, Lumen Enterprises, how's it going? I'm working on the map for the boss battle. It needs to look super badass. And I think we'll merge these two viewports and put our camera down here. Just so we have a bigger area to work with. So this is what the catwalk's looking like. We can now delete or extrude it down. Because I want the player to feel like they're high up, so they need to be able to look around a little bit. Uh, the boss is looking cool, the map is pretty uh, not there yet since we just started. And then we will delete these faces. And we'll turn this into an actual catwalk. So maybe something like this. We don't have to worry about the under faces of it because uh, nobody's ever going to see those. So we can pretend that maybe the boss will grab onto this catwalk here. Went and pull himself up. And I'm assuming we need little areas for railings. So we'll go ahead and add that. For the actual railings, we use Tauruses. So we'll grab a Taurus. And we'll set the major segments to 36 or 32. And the minor, I think that looks fine at 12. Maybe even less. No, 12 is pretty good. Number. It's nice and low. So we'll scale this out until the center is right there on the edge, and then we'll hit Alt-S to scale along normals. Make it about hand-sized. And assuming this guy is right here, we'll put this about waist height. And we'll duplicate this, scale it down. And then the railing thickness is no longer the same since we just scaled it down, so we'll scale it back out just a little bit. And that gives us sort of a catwalk, and we're going to need ramps that lead from 
here, like a bridge to the catwalk. I'm honestly thinking this could be a little bit smaller. Maybe like 38 meters in diameter. We'll take these and join them and smooth them out. Uh, player's height. It looks the same for everyone, so if you're short, you'll just be short. Um, I'm using an average height kind of human person for my measurements. Like, between 5 and 6 feet. Um, but if you're shorter, that's fine too. Um, it still works fine. Uh, for certain aspects in some of the game modes, height is taken into consideration, like where the lasers spawn and stuff that you have to duck under. It'll uh, grab the player's height at the beginning of the match. Okay, so this is sort of what the player's area is looking like right now. Um, once we get a little bit further, we'll actually break the railing here. Oh man, 6'4". Yeah, I'm, I'm personally 6'2"-ish. Uh, being tall sucks sometimes. <laughs> I try to keep a nice open headspace though. When I'm designing things. Alright, so we'll take a cylinder or a cube. Let's do cube. This is the future, but they still have shitty railings. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I just uh, grabbed a bunch of royalty free music from Digital Juice, which is, uh, I pay 10 bucks a month to get unlimited royalty free music from them. We'll bevel this and set it down to one, which would be fine, probably. We just want to catch the light. Probably make this railing a tiny bit shorter. If the player is standing here, yeah, we can probably move this down a little bit. Uh, they have apparently some pretty shady business practices in terms of treating their employees poorly and stuff, but they make pretty good uh, music. <laughs> Alright, so then we will take this, we'll add an empty, put it in the dead center, grab our railing, and we'll add an array modifier, and we'll offset this by object, empty. And we'll move him back to the center. hide our railings for now just so we can see this and we'll up the count and it's offsetting based on the relative location of that so we will apply the location of this and then just rotate it uh, 360 degrees
Oh, we have to figure out a count and then rotate it by that many degrees divided by 360. Divide it into 360. So let's do like 40 of these. And then we'll bring up our calculator and do 360 divided by 40, which is 9. So we'll take this and rotate 9 degrees, and that should give us railings all the way around. I think we can go up a little bit higher on the count, so let's go to 50. Then we will do the same thing here, we'll just drag this out and that should automatically work. Except we probably want to double the count on the outer one, so we'll separate it. And we'll do 100. And then that should be 3.6 degrees. Oh, motherfucker. We need a second empty. And we'll make this one a different shape just so we can differentiate. We'll do a sphere. And we will make this guy empty one. Yeah, the array modifier is super useful. Uh, let's see. Let's do like, I don't know, 70 of them. Uh, oh shit, that's not going to divide even close to evenly. 360 divided by 71. 360. I'm not good at math. I uh, will do 72. So this will be five degrees. And that'll give us some railings for a catwalk. I'm gonna Google catwalk just to make sure that this looks all right. Maybe industrial catwalk because this is bringing up fashion images. Yeah, that looks fine. I think we are going to duplicate the railings though and add uh, one more layer. No, we're not. That looks lame as shit. Oh, hey Atticus, how's it going? <laughs> you don't have to show up to every stream. You're not, um, you're not like... I'm uh, looking for the word that means required. I appreciate you showing up though. Alright, so we've got a nice railing there. It's a good start. Then we'll add a second layer. Oblige! That's the word I was looking for. Ah, you got me. Yeah, we're gonna have to select our empties as well for the duplication process. So we can take another catwalk and put it down there. <laughs> well, I appreciate you showing up. Make this about half height.
I guess now I can look down. There's a nice railing there. Cool. Feels like we have some height. And maybe make this one a little bit wider. And then we have to make it narrower as well. <laughs> he posted a similar, like, he posted that word a couple comments earlier. Alright. So this way we can add, like, a ramp or something. Oh shit, I just killed the wrong one, though. So we can add stairs going up. And we'll add a cube here just for measurements. Just to get a general similar size. So we're not quite there yet. There we go. Take these and scale them up until they match. Uh, what program do I animate in? I use Blender for just about everything. It is my favorite. I mean, but it really all comes down to personal preference. Like I can, I can preach. Oh, him. <laughs> Oh man, I, I wasn't even paying attention to the comments, now I feel like a dick. Yeah, Atticus has a cool channel. For the boss part, if he needs to reach over there, we can always destroy this later, like make it bent and warp and shit. Let's go ahead and add some stairs, just to get a general idea of how we're gonna do that. I'm not sure how I want to handle the stairs yet. We'll go ahead and add a ramp from this platform. Ah, uh, Big Buck Bunny, that's... Man, that is... A long time ago. And there was also, like, Elephant's Dream and stuff like that. So that'll be like our little ramp to the catwalk. We'll go ahead and apply the array on these, but uh, duplicate them and put them on our garbage layer first so we have them as backup if we decide to change the railing count. Oh yeah, Tears of Steel is another good one. That one was... That, it was impressive how well they could do all the visual effects stuff just in Blender with no external compositing package. about here. And we'll delete these poles. I don't know that I've seen Spy Fox. Oh 
Wait, was that was After Effects used in Tears of Steel? Because they totally claimed about that it was done mostly, that it was done pretty much completely in Blender. Like all the green screening and stuff was totally Blender. Oh, Agent 327 was great. They, they got to see that at SIGGRAPH last year. Yeah, Blender has a whole compositing system. You can go to the node editor. Like, I'm doing just some basic blur and stuff, but you can do... It's somewhere around here. I swear, it's... oh, Matt, yeah. Channel key, color key, chroma key, all that stuff. Take these and make a face. We'll subdivide this two times. Just because we're gonna have to divide it up later anyway, might as well do it now. Just to be clean. transition doesn't look fantastic, so we'll add some connectors here. Just to make it look like it's in place. But maybe it can be moved. Faces are going to be unnecessary. We'll go ahead and apply the location, and we'll mirror it across. And then we can go ahead and delete these railings. Yeah, I'm just streaming for the fun of it. I appreciate it when people show up, but it's not, yeah, it's not like you're obligated or anything.
Alright, I'm just trying to create a cool looking environment for... Um, the player to be immersed in. Maybe we'll have like an upper deck around here and then one more catwalk in between. That catwalk will definitely be broken though because of the robot. Um, I'm not much of a programmer, so I've been using Blueprint in Unreal Engine, which is node-based, a lot like this over here. So it's not that hard. Uh, they have some really good tutorials on their website, just unrealengine.com. Or you could always go the Unity route and learn C-sharp, which is a pretty easy language to pick up. Oh, I'm trying to figure out where to go with this. Let's go ahead and add a floor. Just because that's going to be a given that we need that. And we can just get away with a plane for that, just because it's less polygons than a circle. scale these catwalks in some. And I do want a good area for the robot to grab on too, so we can break off this catwalk right here and make it look destroyed. So we'll focus on that for now, I guess. Oh no, I only did hands for the player. There are a bunch of unlockable fists in the game, so you can switch it up. Alright, so I think we want to leave the robot a pretty big area here, so we'll delete like these faces. And since we matched the polygon count on the railing, that's pretty easy to replicate over here. And then these, we can go ahead and apply the arrays. Well, the player is not really going to see their bodies, and if they do, it'll just really get in the way. Also, just it's a lot easier to just make hands than it is to um, do a whole character. So I guess you could attribute it to laziness. We'll warp the rest. We'll warp this a few different ways. I appreciate you coming and hanging out. It's fun to have people to talk to. This is a hell of a lot more boring if I'm just sitting here doing it myself. I usually like watch Netflix or something. Uh, Pete's a great guy. I've, yeah, I've known him for years. Yeah, so 
look down, we've got a nice destroyed catwalk. And we can take that even a little bit further. And we can subdivide this and screw it up a little bit more. And since this is pointed down and it's far away from the player, we don't have to worry about detailing it too much. But we can subdivide these even a little bit further. We can also potentially paint in an opacity map later. And then all these edge loops are going to be completely unnecessary. Oh, motherfucker. When we slid it, I forgot to deselect this side. Alright, so that looks pretty cool. it even a little bit more by making this railing sort of curved off. Maybe something like that. And these railings are no longer matching, so that's bad news. Make sure all the other ones are still attached. I'm not completely opposed to this being detached. And we can distort this even more. I'm not opposed to that. Oh, the robot isn't... Oh, I mean, I guess he's gray, but... This is what he sort of ended up looking like. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of like the white or gray. It's, a, it'll stand out against the dark background. We can always, if if the color doesn't work out or look all right, we can always change that later. Now that we have the robot all rigged and everything, changing the materials is the easy part, honestly.
<laughs> yeah, I've been using Blender for about, god, over 10 years now. So it's all just sort of ingrained in my brain. If you even asked me what a hotkey was for something, I probably wouldn't even be able to tell you. It's just muscle memory. Apology for this and the edge flow and stuff is kind of shitty, but like that doesn't really matter because it's supposed to look destroyed. Yeah, I've uh, this I built this game from scratch completely by myself. I'm gonna have a team helping me for the next project. We're gonna make a multiplayer VR shooter, which I know original, right? But we we have an idea to make it uh, unique though. I'm gonna have uh, Theory Studios helping me out with that one, which they are responsible for a lot of visual effects on like Man in the High Castle and stuff like that. We got too focused on detail here, I'm gonna go back to working on blocking this thing out. So there's gonna be like a walkway area around the edge here. It'll be a bit of a wider walkway. And they're, they're a great studio uh, to work with. Those are, whenever I play Fortnite, those are also the guys that I play Fortnite with. Uh, like, they're, they're not just co-workers, they're, they're good friends. I only work with them on the side, my full-time day job is marketing. We'll bring this all the way down. We also need a hole in the roof for the player to come through. Because the game mode is called Descend, so... You'll start at the roof and take the elevator down. We'll have him come out about here. Maybe do something like this for the roof.
maybe the roof will make an interesting shape. So we'll grab a, we'll grab the same circle as the exterior here. Separate it. Extrude it in. Uh, I haven't seen Adam. I don't really pay much attention to Unity. I tried Unity. I first. Uh, my personal preference is Unreal, but it, that's all it really comes down to. I feel like Unreal is more of an artist's engine, while Unity is more of a programmer's engine. Uh, Unreal is just so artist-friendly with the node-based workflow. Oh, we're starting to get something that actually looks like a map. And the general uh, theme and colors that I'm looking for here, I'll post an image. If I can find it, yeah, here we are. And I don't even keep track of where I have images on my computer, I just uh, save them to Instagram. Yeah, so this is a map I made a while ago when I was going to make the game mode differently. So this is the sort of general color scheme we're going for. Like maybe like a dark blue glowy kind of area. Except I want more glowy tubes. I think that'll be fun. And then make the textures animated like there's fluid flowing through them. I think, on the ramp, we can go ahead and definitely add some glowy stuff. No, that's getting too much into detail, I need to learn to block stuff out first. So there will probably be doors down here and up here. And a whole bunch of smashed shit over here, maybe. The ceiling, I think we can make a bit more interesting. Oh, that's just the general color scheme I want to go for. Haven't decided on final textures or anything. I've gotten a lot better at Substance Painter since I made that. So that gives us a little area for the players to come out. Uh, and I need to add more, add like less radial detail. I don't want the whole thing to be completely the same all the way around. I want to make it interesting for the player to look at. I don't have a concept artist or anything, so I just sort of wing all this stuff until it looks cool. Which, thank goodness for the next project, we're gonna have concept artists. Make this a little bit taller so the player won't be able to see the end of it. And when they're coming down, it'll just fade to black. figure out what I want this to look like. Let's go ahead and look around as the player. Alright, so I think we're going to need some doors. 
So let's add some like cool sci-fi looking doors and we'll go to a new layer to make those. Um, typical door height is six feet eight inches. That sounds low. I'll just make it like seven feet. Yeah, take. And then seven feet to meters is 2.1336. And we'll make this narrower like an actual door. This will just be the doors. We still have to do a door frame. And we'll do like a typical sci-fi kind of door. Like we like I did in the original map. Set this a little bit so the whole thing is centered. And something like that. And since this is going to be so far away, we can do a, we can get away with a lot of this just being texture work. Like, even the door seam could just be texture work, but I know I'm going to be lazy when I get to texturing. So I'm going to go ahead and scale this in just to give us something to start with. Then we can cut along here so we don't get weird edges. That should fix that, and it did not. Okay, now it fixed it. Oh man, I done fucked up. Do not need the faces underneath. Hell, we probably don't need any of these other faces since we're just gonna frame the door. I don't know why I was worrying about that. This is just the door. I'm gonna Google some sci-fi doors to get some inspiration. like multiple locking mechanisms on it that I kind of like. So we're actually going to undo everything we just did. And go a different route with this. Not that I want to just straight up copy anything anyway, but just grab some reference. I'm thinking if we'll extrude this so we can double things easily. We definitely want the door to be beveled like that, I think, nice and sharp.
rest of this we could probably get away with just texturing, honestly. Just make a cool ass textured sci-fi door. It's gonna be from such a distance it won't matter that there's no depth to it. We'll go ahead and add a rim to it. And we'll put it in place and we will instance it. Just so we can block it out nice and easily. We'll give it a little bit of depth here. out a little bit. That's not working quite as well as I was hoping. I was hoping doing an alt test would work fine for that, but it's not. So I have a different solution for that. So we don't have any design specifications for the door, it doesn't matter if these are straight, which will fix our issue. Man, it just does not want to cooperate tonight. Just make the corners like they're fortified, maybe. And then the bases of the door frame. We'll use this as our temporary door, and then we'll instance it around the map. And we don't need any of these back faces, so we'll find our walls and stuff. Uh, we can hide the roof and hide the elevator port. Just take the door. a little bit more depth. And push this back in. So then, if we apply the location of this and we alt D it, if we make changes to one, it'll make changes to all of them. Uh, 
Alright, then let's pretend that they need lighting in this hallway area. So we'll add like a little ceiling kind of thing. Nice and tall. Doesn't have to go all the way over, we just need to be able to put some lights there, because it'll make the lighting more interesting on the map. Although, we can bring it in, and then bevel it. Now we have like a nice walkway that can be lit and stuff, and this human character, we know where the camera is, we're gonna put him on a different layer just because he's getting in the way of me looking around. So we got the boss there, we got our catwalk, we got our destroyed catwalk, we can look around, there are some nice doors, we got a ceiling kind of, it's starting to look blocked out, I spent way too much time getting just this far, uh, just because I don't know what I want things to look like. Maybe on each of the doors, we'll have like a plate running up that would have like a door number on it. These people in the future gotta be super organized. Figure out what kind of engine room we want this to be. All right. So looking at our reference, I really liked how this looked. This one specifically, I really liked how that looked, because it had like giant tubes and generators and shit going around. Let's add a couple of those. Just like big ass generator things. So add a torus to get the right general shape. 32 is fine. We'll scale this up. power core kind of things. Move these to their own layer to work on them individually. We don't want to make it too big. We'll just make a few of them in different locations. Maybe like that long. And then we can actually mirror this to save some time. Throw some 
windows in there. Oh, we're in space. And this is like a weird ass engine room. Oh, this is like way deep into the space station. If there were windows, it would just be wires and shit showing through it. I do appreciate the suggestion, though. Then we can also mirror this vertically. We want this to be smooth. We want like a dark, foreboding enemy's lair. Uh, windows with cool planets and stuff outside of them would be so... It would be cool. Like, uh, it would be friendly and inviting. I'm gonna sort of try to do something similar to this design, but not, not exact, not identical. Also a mirror on the Z, and then we will we'll set the cursor here. Except maybe give it just a little bit of breathing room. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, this is this is live. Oh. This middle one, actually all of these I think will connect to the ground, which is going to defeat the purpose of us mirroring this vertically in a second. But it'll look a lot cooler. So go ahead and apply our vertical mirror. mirror it back on the Y. And then we'll take these. And make a cool shape out of it. same thing for the center one.
and for this one. It's looking kind of cool. We can add a further connection, like a base to this. Just try to match, doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not much of a perfectionist when it comes to this stuff. I'm more of a let's get it done kind of person. Hey Colin, I'm working on the boss map for Punch Bomb. So this is what we got so far. This is where the player is standing. If we look around, we have like a catwalk, some doors, and I'm working on a power generator kind of thing right now. Uh, we rigged the boss yesterday, so now he's completely articulate. We're not going to be able to see this from here, so we'll go ahead and scale it in some. Or set it up maybe on a ledge so we can see it. So we have to make everything visible to the player, otherwise it's just wasted detail. And these are going to be like glowy generator tubes, so maybe... Somewhere around here. like maybe two of those. So you don't want the whole map to be mirrored, that would be boring as hell. We're gonna need bridges from the catwalk to there, and maybe one more catwalk in between, but probably not. We'll just make it like a flimsy ass catwalk that's really dangerous to walk on. Uh, Colin, I use Unreal Engine, Blender, and Substance Painter, and sometimes ZBrush. Unreal Engine is where I do all of the actual game work, though. So I can um, open my Unreal project here if anybody's interested. Documents. Punch on back up. 2018. Okay, so I'll leave that opening in the background. It takes a little while to load. 
Alright, let's unhide this guy. Or solo this guy, and then let's make some like connecting machinery. Stop looking at this reference image. I don't want to copy it completely. I just want some cool glowy tubes, and those were neat. Now we're on this out. this a bit more to actually match the angle. On how to rig. I actually did rigging on the robot last night, um, although that live stream might be a little bit hard to follow. I'm not much of an expert rigger though. Um, we have a guy on our team at Theory who's really good. You might have heard of him. His name is Juan Pablo Buza. He's responsible for plan rig. That would be a guy to ask about rigging. I just sort of thrash it together until it works. So the Unreal project should be working or opening. That's yeah, at forty-five percent. Yeah, this rig works all right. It's uh, nothing special though. It's actually pretty janky. Like if I move this hand, then I have to rotate this control to make sure it stays oriented. I don't know how to fix that. piston actually work. But I mean, yeah, it's just a bunch of bones in the right locations for their joints. That's pretty much all rigging comes down to. And then, like, my rigs are super simple. I just put bones where they need to go and then add inverse kinematic arms, which allow me to do stuff like this. Or this. Other than that, it's pretty much pretty basic. Oh, game is almost open. It's causing Blender to lag a bit. Man, that is cool design.
like how that cube is looking, so we're gonna make a new one. This doesn't need to be this wide, so we'll put an edge loop there and cut it. Oh, it's lagging! And then we don't need these back faces, they're just going to be extra poly count. And we are lagging like crazy because of the game engine coming up. So I'll just give that a couple more seconds here. Almost there. not used to this machine lagging at all. It's a pretty powerful machine. Yeah. Anyway, we can work on this while you wait. Modeling rooms is always really difficult, uh, purely for this reason, because you have to have the walls for reference, but then they also get in the way a good amount. Maybe we'll have some pipes coming off of this, going into the walls and stuff. This ceiling uh, is getting really annoying. So we're just gonna hide the layer that it's on. Oh, that the game came up. Oh man, it's compiling shaders. I guess I haven't opened it in a while. Or I told it to, oh that's right. I told Unreal Engine to keep shader cache in the local project folder 
which um, means it's going to have to recompile the shaders for it. This is the game engine, though, um, and if it comes up, this is what programming in Unreal looks like. Oh wait, I don't, I'm not showing Unreal, my bad. So this is what programming in Unreal looks like. It's all node-based, which is pretty cool. You can also code in C++, which is neat, um, but this is a lot more user-friendly for me. This is what the game engine looks like. If I go to a different map... The shaders are still compiling. I don't know if you can see that. You can't see that message, but this is what this map looks like model-wise. We got some sci-fi doors there. Got like a cool sci-fi roof. All the newer stuff I'm working on looks way cooler though. while it's on shader it has 5,000 shaders left to compile but this is what some of the models are looking like for the new game mode which is pretty cool and anyway, back to work on our map we have like a wire here and a computer terminal coming off the side where people can access it Big one there, big one there. <sighs> Damn, this is taking its sweet time. Also, I realized I'm still showing Unreal and not what I'm working on. That's the only problem with XSplit, it doesn't switch windows when you switch windows. I should probably try to use OBS, but it has, probably works similarly.
I really want to make these connections stick out wider. So we'll do that like this. So we'll pretend that this is like engine fuel or something that's being pumped into here. Maybe the computer systems to control it will be up here on this level. It would make sense if the curves matched up with the actual pipes that they're pumping into. match up over here.
Yeah, that looks alright. Oh, now we can finally see what some of the art looks like in the actual game. Although it's still compiling a lot of the shaders, it's got some of them in place. Let's go ahead and assume there's going to be a mounting plate for this. So we'll match the cube to this wall. Drag that out far enough. And then we'll bevel it. Don't need the back faces. for this pipe. Duplicate it. It's not cursor to select it. Snap, selection to cursor. Rotate it 90 degrees, and then rotate it around until it matches. And scale this in, doesn't need to be that wide for this one. Try to center it. 
and then scale it down so it fits. bar here. And to do that we'll subdivide this and we'll solo this And then if you're in curves and they already have a certain thickness, you can Alt S like that. So we're going to make sure that these are straight and then try to match this rotation here. Or this one actually, because it'll be more accurate. We'll add some panels in here. Maybe a door. I don't know. Just stuff that you can that you can put screws and stuff in later. And to do that, we're gonna take this. scale it down some. And solidify. Just some detail we can like slap some labels on and shit later. We'll go ahead and apply this little as well after we're happy with the thickness. And then maybe bevel the edges of one of them at least. Ah, I'm thinking bevel the edges of both. Need the bottom faces.
terms of blocking stuff out, I think this is fine. We'll go ahead and make these mesh. Before we do that, though, we're going to duplicate them and put them on our garbage layer just so we have them as backup. If we decide to make changes later. And this way we can clean these up. I was thinking we could join them and then mirror it by joining it with this, but I probably want the other side to be unique. Let's add like a little keypad next to the door. Which for that... We we'll want to grab the human player just so we can get height reference. We want a keypad to be probably about waist high, maybe a little bit higher. Right, this right now is way too high. So we'll put the keypad about here. and square-ish and slanted doesn't need to connect to the wall or it could I don't know I think not I think connecting to the wall looks a little bit funny make a couple edge splits here and we'll extrude this down. And we'll connect it to the door. and make it round. This was already uh, hard ops edges. Looks like it's not going to be very responsive in X-Split, but this is what the art sort of looks like. 
I'm gonna go ahead and close it to save on bandwidth though. We'll go back to our door. And none of these faces are gonna be necessary. Face isn't going to be necessary. So nobody's ever going to see that in a million years. Select all these edges that are beveled. some decent progress here. I'm thinking we'll add one more cube to finish off the power core kind of. This side will be shorter. Just because we don't want it to be symmetrical or anything, that would be kind of gross. We can delete the back faces. And we can make it maybe. Yeah, we'll just split it in half, that's fine. We'll put this on our garbage layer just so we have it in case. That's gonna make a triangle, which kind of sucks. So we'll snap to vertice. And then we can delete this edge. Bevel this one too.
I'm thinking we'll have like a cube that goes all the way across the top. So we'll duplicate these edges. Solidify. that a lot better. And try to match the width here. On this side, I'm thinking we'll have like a nice cube come over here. Jutting out of the side. Don't know what it is, just like maybe a box of electronics or something. Maybe add some connections for that. This is how far we got tonight, it's about the two hour mark. I'll think more about what I want this place to actually look like, and what kind of electronics and shit we can shove in here to make it look cool. Um, until next time, tomorrow I'm probably working on something else, I won't be streaming, but I'll be back sometime next week, possibly even Sunday, so until then, hope you all have a great night. Thanks for stopping by.